Welcome to today's masterclass. My name is Lisa Richter and I will be your host today. On the off chance that you don't know about CSIA, we are a global nonprofit trade association with over 500 member companies in 35 countries. For system integrator members, the CSIA best practices manual and CSIA certification are some of the more popular member benefits, but you will also enjoy a variety of others, including professional development, learning from your peers, and access to professional services experts, including insurance, financial, and legal, who understand the SI's unique business needs. For partner members, CSIA offers an ecosystem to grow your SI programs, understand your customers' pain points, monitor industry trends, and share your thought leadership. With thousands of qualified integrators and suppliers, the CSIA Industrial Automotion Industrial Automation Exchange helps SIs, industry suppliers, and manufacturers connect and do business. For SIs and partners, it provides a platform to support your content and SEO marketing efforts, position yourself as a thought leader, and nurture prospects during the complicated buyer's journey. The good news is that we are now a little more than halfway through the year, and both membership dues and exchange profile upgrades are prorated, which is just a fancy way, way of saying they're half off. And we've put together a first-timer package for companies that join in August that includes some new member benefits, including an EPUB of new products and services called Innovation for Integration. The package includes a free listing in this new EPUB, but also some other goodies to help you get your message and brand in front of your customers. You can get all the details at www.controlsys.org backslash shine. At this time, I would like to introduce today's speaker, Kevin McCluskey. Kevin, over to you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. I have a uh, presentation. I have a full webinar that uh, we put together on our side um, that I'm very excited to be able to show you here. Uh, this is, um, in theory, you should be able to see this at this point. Uh, this is uh, Build Application in Minutes with Ignition Perspective. Uh, in case you don't know who we are, don't know who I am, my name is Kevin McCluskey. I'm with Inductive Automation, and I am here to talk to you a little bit about our perspective uh, offering that we have inside our Ignition software package. So I've been with the company for over a decade here, uh, which is kind of crazy to say. I started out when um, we were a smaller company. We have grown by leaps and bounds. And the company was already about a decade old when I, I came into the company itself. But before that, I had a web application development background. So I was working in the web industry. I was creating web applications for a local uh, newspaper and then a number of publishing companies. Uh, and I was working as a contract uh, contractor, basically, uh, for one of the organizations there. You could almost think of it as a control systems integrator for the web. Uh, and so then I switched over to industrial automation and started working with different companies who were working on factory floors and working in uh, technologies that were very far away from web at that time. Uh, we had... You know, uh, we started out with uh, some some other competitor softwares, which I won't mention, but uh, did a lot of a lot in HMI, a lot in SCADA, uh, a lot in uh, PLC programming, uh, wrote a few programs there. Uh, I wasn't one of the main controls engineers, but wore many hats. Uh, and then a number of years later, we inductive automation came out with a way to create these web applications, which kind of brought it all full circle. So. Uh, it's really great to be able to talk to you about all of this today. We're going to be talking about how to create applications quickly with easy to use powerful design tools. Uh, we're going to see an application built live. So I'm going to create something completely live with a completely fresh software install. If something goes slightly wrong, I apologize. It's a live demo, but I wanted to show you really from scratch completely how easy it is to get going. And then you'll gain an understanding of you know, how more complex applications can be built using similar techniques. 
if we take a look at the web applications in general, you know, why, why do we really care about this? Why is this useful? Why is this important? We had desktop applications for a really long time and desktop applications handled most of the things that we needed to do. Well, if you've been online in the last 10 years, you probably realize that a lot of these desktop applications moved over to be web applications. That's very true for business applications. That's true for even things like Office 365 that's online if you want to do that or you know, Google Docs or Drive or any of those different platforms that have things that were traditionally applications and now are what you would call web applications. Uh, it makes it so much more accessible, all of these different uh, technologies. It makes it where you can access them from anywhere. Uh, it's a big part of digital transformation for, for so many organizations as their technology stack improves. The number of applications that are switching over to be web applications are increasing. And that means that anybody from anywhere who's accessing things, as long as it goes in with the right security roles and the right connections to the security infrastructure that they can access all of the different business applications that an organization may be using. Anything that is a web application can be pulled up inside a web browser. There's no software install. And the only thing that's required is the security setup, which is very important. Um, but luckily the industry has standardized on a few security technologies that make it so that it's easy for a modern web application to tie into those uh, and to take advantage of all of the good security best practices that the IT department has already set up inside your organizations. Web applications, as it says here, the, it's the winner for visualization for business system. It is the clear direction that everything is has either already gone or is already going. Um, and it's really enabled by that support of those modern security technologies, like I was talking about a moment ago. So if we take a walk down memory lane, how did we get here? You know, when I was doing web application programming 20 years ago, and we were doing things in low level uh, programming languages that were going against the web, um, how did we evolve from there to where we are today, where every company has a website, where there are website builders online, uh, where it's easy to get started with creating these web applications that are these templated web applications? Well, it's been something where the technology has just evolved over time in a way that has enabled a lot of all of this. Uh, we have some standards out there, and those standards have continued to evolve. We have standard bodies that have continued to evolve these standards to make things more capable. Uh, behind the scenes, there's JavaScript, there's HTML, there's CSS. You've probably heard these words before. Um, if you are a web programmer, you've worked with them extensively. If you're on the business side, you at least probably know what uh, HTML is. Um, and what JavaScript is. Uh, CSS is the styling behind things. So now you know what CSS is as well. Uh, so all of these standards have evolved to the point that these technology companies who've been trying to put their applications on the web have influenced these standards. They've influenced these standard bodies to add new things to these standards to make it so that all of the different web browsers can support the type of technologies that they need in order to put the things on the web, to have good drag and drop, to have right-click menus, to have the ability to control the screen and the layout and the design as things go smaller and larger, to have the ability to respond to user clicks and mouse movements and do animations and 3D and uh, really advanced visuals and streaming of video and standard base. There's been a lot of work that's gone into the web to make all of this possible. Um, and modern web applications take advantage of all of that. So you hop on YouTube and you just take it, you know, that for granted that basically you can pop in and see any video that you want that's on YouTube. You did just a couple of clicks, it's going to pop up. Uh, you have a comment system integrated. You have all of these other things that are integrated uh, inside your viewing experience. And it's this web application that you're using that is YouTube uh, that is really full featured and can do a lot. Modern web applications have the ability to do almost everything that a desktop application could do with a few exceptions. It doesn't have access to the actual hardware on the system, um, but it does have access potentially to things like webcams, right? We're doing this through a web browser right now. 
Uh, web applications in the industrial space and in the IT space have been a little bit different. Uh, the IT space got on this train early on and has been doing web applications for a really long time. In the industrial space, it's only been something that fairly recently the technology companies inside this space have started creating products that are really good enough to be the main application uh, products that are building these applications. There's a few things that uh, if we take a look and contrast these modern tools to some of the tools that you had a few years ago, um, there's a few big differences there that are important. So modern tools, uh, you have coding, you have web frameworks. So if somebody's hired as a full stack developer, or somebody's hired as a web programmer, they're going to be using some of these frameworks most likely. Um, they're, if they're hired specifically to develop applications from scratch, um, they're going to be using things like uh, React and some of these other frameworks. Um, the, that's contrasted by some of the other systems that are website builders where you can spin up a website for your business in minutes. Those would be these drag and drop simple designers. These are builder applications that are created by different companies to allow people to create websites really quickly which is really useful, um, but you normally have a trade-off between that and flexibility, customizability, um, how possible it is to make changes to what that framework actually looks like. And then you have applications with direct ports to HTML. And when I say that industrial applications have only recently become good enough to be full-fledged web-first web apps, uh, I'm referring to this because you used to have a lot of industrial applications and you still do um, from certain companies, where their HTML, their web pages are simply a view or a little window into their existing application. So you've built an application for the desktop and then it becomes a web view, um, kind of a snapshot of that. So it doesn't take advantage of responsiveness or design or being able to design it once and run on a mobile device and on a uh, browser at the same time. Uh, it's not taking advantage of things like drag and drop and then some of the modern web technologies or video streaming or any of that. Uh, all it is is taking, um, it's almost like you pointed a video camera at a desktop application you're presenting it inside the web. So um, back in the day, we had that as well. Inductive automation had one of those too. So uh, we are no stranger to that technology. And that's how most of the companies inside this space used to do things. And, and some companies in the industrial space still do that. Um, and some have modernized to uh, the type of offering that I'm about to show you here. Uh, and then you have this full native low code design type of paradigm. And that's basically what we've centered around. So the idea is to try to take the best of all of these worlds, have drag and drop type of functionality to build things out while still having the power behind the scenes to customize things and to work with them uh, in, in ways that are going to be able to, if you, if you want to use scripts, you can use scripts behind the scenes. If you want to have it tied to advanced styles that are going to do things like blurs, and fades and transitions, you can do those types of things. Uh, if you want to have it mobile responsive, so it's adjusting how it looks as you move, it'll be able to do that. So I've been referencing this the whole time as I've been talking about all of this. Um, our software is called Ignition and Ignition has this modern designer, as I said, best of all of those technologies there that I just mentioned. I'm a little bit biased, but I'm going to be able to show you this actually in action here in just a moment. Most of this presentation is a demonstration. Um, and you know, one of the things that we include is the latest web technologies. We are using the React framework behind the scenes. That doesn't really matter to you. What, what probably matters to you is that you can design an application and use it right away. Uh, and it's really easy to do. Fully mobile responsive, able to work with cell phones, browsers, um, however you want to, um, whatever device that you want to run it on, as long as it has a modern web browser. Uh, and applications can be native applications as well. So simple applications are literally in minutes. So I'm going to 
show you that uh, uh, complex applications can be built really rapidly as well. Uh, communication is built right in, which is a really important piece. Uh, some softwares require you to do some advanced things in order to get that communication piped through, uh, and Ignition's not like that. Uh, and so Ignition was born out of the industrial space, but we've seen a growing number of IT organizations or IT organizations inside um, industrial companies or outside of industrial companies using Ignition to build their web applications that don't even connect to industrial devices. Uh, so there's a whole variety of things that you can do. Um, I'll start out by showing some of these things that do connect to industrial devices. Um, but then I'll show some things that are connected directly to databases as well, uh, and you'll be able to get a sense of what some of that might look like. With all of that said, uh, we are now at the moment of the demo. So, uh, as I said, most of this is a demonstration. I don't want to waste your time. I want to make sure that uh, you get what you came for. We had a, uh, you know, inside the information that we had at the beginning, we wanted to present to you that you could actually see these things working. So what I'm going to do is hop over. Um, I am presenting my screen here. So um, I'm switching over to a system here. I'm going to do a quick log on. Would it help if I type my password correctly here? <laughs> and this is a desktop system inside our offices. It doesn't have Ignition installed at all. So I'm going to do a completely fresh Ignition install here. This is a copy of Ignition that was downloaded from our website uh, last night, actually, just <laughs> getting the freshest copy, the latest version that we have here. Uh, and I'm double clicking on this and opening it up. And I'm just going through the installer right now. And it's installing Ignition. Ignition will install on Windows, on Linux, on Mac OS, uh, wherever you're installing it. It is a software platform that is going to allow you to build these web applications. It allows you to do a lot of other things as well, uh, but we're going to be highlighting the web application building part of it today. And that, that web application building part of it is called Perspective. That's the name of uh, the module behind the scenes that is doing that uh, web application building that's providing the tool set to allow you to build web applications. So um, at this point, Ignition is installed. If Ignition was running on my local system, on a desktop, on a laptop, doesn't really matter what it's running on, uh, the process is the same. Uh, if you're running on Linux, there's a separate Linux installer, of course. If you're running on Mac OS, there's a separate Mac OS installer. I'm going to create a user here. Try to give it a good password. And our security is built into the platform. It's very important. Uh, it's, it's one of the key pieces of what we do in inductive automation having a good security team and having a strong focus on security for any of these web applications is critical. Uh, we're used in all sorts of critical industry uh, that's used all over the country and all over the world. We're in over hundred countries. And so we have to have security as one of the main points of focus that we have. Um, if you happen to be technical and you're listening to this uh, or you're watching this, we support OIDC, we support SAML, um, we support uh, centralized identity providers, and generally speaking, so we'll support Active Directory as well, um, but generally speaking, we'll plug into your security infrastructure that you have in place. Uh, and all right, so it's installed. I am up and running. I'm going to click uh, yes to enable this quick start. And this quick start right here is a project and a set of uh, simulators that is just adding for me automatically. When you install Ignition, you'll get this option for yourself as well. And this is done at this point. So I would say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, start your engines, start your uh, stopwatches uh, and take a look because I'm here to prove that you can do this in minutes. So um, we're going to go through and do this completely scratch, creating a new web application right now. So I click this Get Designer link. I'm downloading the designer for Windows. This is a separate program. Uh, it's going to launch this up here. So I'll minimize my web browser for now, come up to my Ignition Designer launcher, and I'm going to launch the designer for my local system right here. And while I am launching this up, uh, this is going to be loading 
the different pieces that are these modules behind the scenes. So I mentioned that the have, we have the module called Perspective, which is this web application builder. I'm going to create a new project here and you'll see me use Perspective in just a moment. So I'll create this project called this demo. I'll give it a database that I'm connected to and I'll give it a project template. These are all standard templates that have a little bit of navigation built in, uh, things like that. So I've selected that at this point as launching up the designer. And inside this designer on the left-hand side, uh, this is where that perspective module exists. And under these views, this is where I actually create content. So I'll come to my home view and maybe I'll clear this out a little bit. I don't need everything that's here by default, um, but I'll, I'll tie all of this together to tags as well. So we have all of these different tags. These are in the system by default. Um, if I start out with that demo project and I'll put these tags, I'll show them on the screen. So I want to maybe see some tank levels that I have uh, here. So I'm going to drop a, uh, a couple of tanks in here in the components and that will drop inside the designer directly. Um, I will set this guy up. This will be, um, and I'll probably need three or four of these. So I'll just do four side by side. Um, and I'm just going to paste those right in here. Um, each one of these, I can tie to a different uh, tag that I have. If you're familiar with industrial applications, you're going to be very familiar with tags. If you're not familiar with tags, uh, if you're on the IT side, you can just think of these as variables that keep changing their values over time. Uh, and each one of these different variables that we have here is going to uh, be, I can do other things with it. Uh, and these are normally inside PLCs or other devices that these tags are coming from. Uh, and so if you ever need to integrate with an industrial system, you'll see that tags are a very common thing to have. Um, tags can also be used as variables inside Ignition, so you can create your own variables. So at this point, I've just dropped these all on the screen. What I'm going to end up doing is setting this so it will automatically resize and adjust based on screen size. So everywhere in addition, the design is responsive. So I can shrink it down and expand it out. And I can see if it's on a mobile device and it's gonna look like that. Um, as of right now, it's going to be scrunching that up a little bit. Maybe I don't want that to happen. I want it to push things down. So there's a variety of different options that are here behind the scenes to allow for some adjustments on the fly. So at this point, it'll push it down and I'll have a little scroll bar right here. Well, maybe I don't want the scroll bar. Maybe I want it to push down the rest of the contents. And I won't go through all of our settings here automatically, you know, but I'll, I'll go through just a couple of them. Um, and there you go. And now it's pushing things out on the screen. And of course, I'm going to have something else on the screen as well. Um, I might want to show uh, something that's a little bit more advanced here. Um, that looks kind of nice that I can latch onto. So I'll pick, um, I don't know, let's, let's do the map component here. Drop it right down below. I can set up the uh, positioning. So um, set it up so it's going to be at minimum 400 uh, tall, but I can set it up so it'll also grow to fill the space. Um, if I want some padding, because that looks a little bit funny without padding, I'll show you the style customizer right here. Um, all of these styles, I mentioned CSS earlier. This is where those CSS styles actually come from. And so I'll expand this out and I'll take a look at the margins and padding and I'll do a uh, five pixel margin um, on the bottom. Now you can see just a little bit of space there. Um, I can of course type these in by hand if I want to, I'll give it a little bit more space and you can see that extra um, border right there uh, makes it look a little bit nicer. And once again, I can take this and change the sizes to see how it will show on different devices, see how it will show if it's rendered on a tablet or if it's rendered on a uh, desktop. And I'm just going to hit save right now. And this saves the project uh, and I will launch this up. And we can see this project right here inside my web browser. That's all expanded out and exactly what I was just showing in the designer, you can see in the main pane here. Uh, we have some navigation along the side as well. Um, I'll also add in the, uh, for the charts and the alarms, I'll add in just a little bit of additional, um, additional configuration to make those so that those will pop up right away. So for our charts, I'm going to go over to that page. 
adding history to any of these different values is as simple as going in, editing these tags, going down to history and setting history enabled so that it's true, pointing it at a database. And then if I want to show these on a screen, I can do that by just selecting them out of this. I can do some drag and drop here too. I could take all of these guys that I'm selecting or a subset, maybe I'll just do three or four, hit add selected tag, and then set up the time range. I just installed Ignition, so I don't have much um, history here, right? So I'll go to the last four minutes, hit apply, and you can see values for all of these that are coming through right here. Last thing that I have to show here is alarms. Alarms are set up in the same type of way. So I can come into an individual tag, um, go into the alarm configuration and set up a high alarm uh, and set it up so that if it's above a certain set point, then it's going to qualify. In this case, if it's over nine, this is going to be an alarm. So I'll hit save right there. And if I go back to my web browser, this is automatically updated with the changes I made. You'll notice that there wasn't any message for me to interact with um, or anything for me to do. And I now have alarms um, that are set up here. I have charts and I have this home page right here. This is all a web application that I just built uh, that is live that everybody can see. And when I say that everybody can see, I do mean that because what you can do from your own system right now, if you so desire, is go to this URL and actually see this. So this is a completely fresh install. As I said, we set up some port forwarding beforehand so that we'd be able to allow this access from the outside. And you can pull this up right now. Uh, you can pull out your phone and point at this. Uh, and from your phone, you'd be able to see what's going on right there. You'd be able to um, basically search for this. Um, you could, if you have an iPhone, you can just pull out the camera app and it's going to prompt you. If you have a, an Android phone and you have a QR scanner, QR code scanner, you can use that. Or you can just type in kevin.tryignition.com and you can do this on a mobile device or a desktop. If you're sitting at your desktop and you wanna do it from there, uh, you certainly can do that as well. So I'll actually pull that up again in just a second. I know some of you might still be pulling that out. Um, there's one other thing that I wanted to do here um, to add to the demo. Um, and I'm actually going to add a few other more complex things, uh, more advanced features here. I'll add whatever I have time for and still leaving, you know, but still leaving some time for the Q&A at the end. Um, so I'm going to come over to a website and this is the Ignition Exchange. Um, before I do that, I'm actually going to pop over and take a look at our status pages here. Um, and we have a lot of people on. So we have 84 people who have just launched this perspective session. Uh, and we can see that information uh, coming in from around the world here. So uh, it's great to have you checking this out live from this system. Uh, this is much more than I thought would be uh, actively interacting with it. Um, but that's fine. And I'm happy to have you guys. Uh, doing that. So I'm going to pop over here to the exchange. Um, this is the Ignition Exchange. This is a place that people who have created resources can upload those resources to and share with the whole community. So this is almost like an app store, except it's free. It's free for everybody. There's no charge, no paid model. And all of these different components that you see here um, that are available, these are coming from folks inside the community, some are from our team, some are from external. Um, and I'm just gonna pick a couple that I think would be useful inside this application. So maybe I have an equipment schedule that I wanna drive in here. I'll download that equipment schedule. Um, and I happen to know that there's a nice diagnostics one here as well. And so I'll pull up that diagnostics, uh, ignition diagnostics page here. Uh, so this is, this is the one I'm looking for. Once again, screenshots, you can see that uh, there's some nice design there, uh, and I'm going to click download on this as well. And I have both of those downloaded. I'll import those into my local system here. Uh, so doing that, these are the configuration web pages that you see right here. I'll go to Ignition Exchange, import these package files, uh, and then just drop this in immediately. So I'm going to import this into that demo application that I just created. Right. And then I'm going to import 
this other one as well, the equipment scheduler into the demo application too. Point it right here and import. And now both of those have been imported. Once again, um, I said I was going to bring this back up just in case anybody missed it um, so that you can uh, pull this up if you are interested in it. And I am going to be adding to this application. So as we go along, if you're taking a look at this, you'll see some of the changes or really all of the changes that I'm making uh, live. As soon as I click that save button, those changes will come through. You'll be able to see that right away. Hey, Kevin, um, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I wonder if it would be helpful for attendees if you could post that in the chat in case they can sure. get the, the QR code um, to work. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let me do that right now. All right. Perfect, thank you. That should we do also it had, for you. We also mm -hmm. had a question here. Um, it, it, somebody says the tanks don't show well on the iPhone. Interesting. So the uh, depending on which iPhone you're using, it's possible that, um, oh, oh, okay. So here, actually, this gives me a good uh, opportunity to demonstrate something. So the tanks have this little scroll bar along the side. That scroll bar is based on the design choices that were made. So when I chose to put these here like this, I set it up. Um, when I added that map component, I set it up so that those, um, that would shrink, this whole, whole section would shrink, and then you could um, tap and drag. Um, and I'll, I'll just show that. So when I get small, the tanks are going to do that, right? And they're gonna look a little bit funny because you can tap and drag and scroll through them on the iPhone, um, but that's how they're going to look. If I don't want it to do that, I'm just gonna change this one option. So I'll go ahead and do that right now and hit save. Um, so I'm going to say, I don't want this to shrink. Uh, all I want it to do, it's going to push out the page contents if it grows like that, and then you can scroll the whole page. So now that I've done that, I'm going to hit save right there. Take a look at your iPhone that you were just, uh, you know, you had this showing on, um, and you're going to see that change immediately. So the tanks should now um, be somewhere, the iPhone, uh, depending on which iPhone you have, it's somewhere between 300 and 450 pixels or so. So it should look something similar to these couple of designs here. Um, if you've got a really old phone um, that has a tiny viewport, it might end up looking like that and you scroll through the whole thing. So let me know if that adjusted it for you so it looks a little bit more like you would expect it to. All right. So yeah. Oh, great. Now it's showing. So I saw that. Excellent. Okay. So, um, so let me go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit to this. I have a couple of things that uh, I, I had plenty of contents if anybody didn't have any back and forth here, um, but I think that there are going to be some continuing questions as well. So I'll pull in a couple of the resources that I just created there. And um, I, wanna, I wanna pull in two different things here. So, so first I'll utilize um, and I'll utilize these transaction groups. Uh, these transaction groups are a piece inside Ignition that allow for logging to a database. Um, I'll just do a uh, standard transaction group that'll be a historical group. Uh, and I'm going to pull in some of these values. Uh, these values, uh, actually, let me show you at the same time. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around here a little bit, but I'm going to show you a new device connection as well. Uh, so if I'm creating a device connection to a completely new device, it's going to look a little something like this. I'll create a new device connection. I happen to have a Micrologics that's inside our offices. So I'll do this. Um, I'll call it MLX, point it at the IP address that I happen to know this is sitting at, create a new device connection, and that ends up going through its connectivity. Um, I'll also create another one that is a simulator device, um, and I'll call this guy my dairy simulator. And each one of these, uh, the simulators, I can edit the programs and modify how they look um, and how those simulator programs actually run behind the scenes. I'll just load that in and that's it. So I'm connected to new devices and I didn't have to do anything else. They immediately sh show up inside the Ignition Designer as well, which is really nice. Um, so I can browse these devices. I can see what's inside these devices and I can pick which different variables, which different tags I wanna use inside my System. So I'll just pull in my whole dairy um, setup and my micro logics. I'll pull in my N7 and my F8. 
Uh, and these values are coming through and streaming through in real time as well. So these are real values right here coming from the real PLC um, that I might have this set up. And this could be, I can give all these aliases. So that could be amps right there. And inside dairy, they already have nice names for the tags. Um, so there's a refrigeration and overview set, set up and a system inside there. And I'll set these guys so that they will start logging to a database table as soon as uh, specific actions have happened. Um, so what I'll end up doing is, let me, let me take one of these tags that has some predictable behavior right here. So ramp two, I'm gonna drop in here. Maybe I wanna log my accumulator level, my ambient humidity. Um, I could log my case count. Uh, and case count might be the most important thing to me out of all of these. Um, so I'll log my case count there and I'll log this to table called case log and just set this up so that it logs uh, whenever that goes over a certain amount, right? So that ramp two is predictable behavior. Uh, it's going to log every time that it goes over maybe 1.9 here because I happen to know that as it increases, it goes to two and then it comes back down. And this could be any typical process that you actually have inside your system. So I'll do that. Um, that looks good to me. Uh, and just hit save right here. This information, uh, one, it'll automatically create a database table. And then over time, this is going to create new items inside that database table for me as well. Uh, so while that's adding to that database table, I'm going to create a new query that I can put on the screen. Um, this is the named query section. And I'll, um, uh, I'll name this based on what it actually is here, right? Um, so this is going to be uh, for whatever my log is that I'm pulling from, I'll just name this log. And then my authoring for this um, can be as simple as coming in and we've got a little uh, drag and drop editor for some of all of this. So I'll, I'll do so, super simple. We don't have anything else here. Open this query builder um, and I'll take this log that I just created, this case log, drag it out. Um, and then I can come to testing, execute that. And I can see that I haven't actually uh, triggered any of these groups inside here yet. But if I come down and I take a, look, take a look at my ramp, it's about to increase past 1.9. As soon as it does, that information um, in theory will come in right. Um, let me make sure, let me see what I did right here. So, um, oh, so I, I missed one option right there, um, which that one should be a good option. Okay, all right, I fixed that right now. So it'll be active as soon as that's uh, the case and it circles back to 1.9 again. here. As I said, live demo, of course, I'm not, you know, uh, it's possible that I'll get something wrong as we go along. So um, that should take care of it there. And then um, we lodged or we loaded all that from the exchange a minute ago. Um, so I can also throw that into our screen. So we have this nice equipment schedule. Um, what I'll do is I will add another screen to our application that has this equipment schedule on it. Um, I'll call this equipment. And inside here, inside this page, um, I'll just set this up. And I know that I'm going to add a couple of other things as well. So I'll do those at the same time. Um, so we'll, we'll clear this out um, and I'll duplicate equipment here so that it is set up and ready to go for the other couple of things that I set up. So diagnostics, diagnostics, uh, if I can spell it right. Um, and then uh, we, we might have another one that we do later, but I'll just do this right now. Come over to my homepage, I'll give this text. Uh, this is going to be equipment for this guy. And then I will drag my equipment schedule directly in here. So this is the equipment schedule. I'll just drop right in. Um, it's a nice component that has a variety of pieces of functionality to it. You can see different equipment that's scheduled at different times. We'll set this up so that it both shrinks and grows, so it'll fill the space here. Uh, and that's all I'm going to do. That's my equipment uh, page. And I'll hop over to the diagnostics and I'll add this here as well. And I'll call this diagnostics. We can drag in my diagnostics view that is going to give me some pretty extensive diagnostics from the Ignition Gateway webpage. So I can see what's happening. I can see information about all of these. Um, those pop up right here automatically too. Uh, and then of course, the last item for me to do is add these to the menu. So I will uh, open up the 
menu that I have here. Uh, it's going to be under my docs. Uh, and inside this menu, this is once again, a, just a component. And inside this component, I have all of these different things that I can do. So I'll um, set up a new item. And so this one won't be alarms anymore. Um, I'll set up the uh, equipment one and we'll call this equipment. I can give it a label, call the label equipment as well. And then a uh, little nice icon picker so I can pick what icon that I want from material. Um, so from here, uh, this, uh, so this is equipment schedule. So maybe I'll give it a um, type of, uh, you know, maybe a clock or, uh, you know, well, sure, clock, clock is good. This will be kind of similar to alarms, but it's a little bit different. You see that there's a lot of uh, different icons that are available there. So that'll be the equipment schedule for that item. Um, and then at the same time, I will come in and I'll pop in and give it the diagnostics page. And for this diagnostics page, call it diagnostics, give it a little better icon here as well. Um, and maybe this will be a gear icon um, for the diagnostics. I like that idea. And that looks good to me. So I've got those all set. Those are in the menu. Um, and I haven't hit save yet, so you haven't noticed them pop up inside your application. But I'll give you some URLs so that they're URL friendly as well. Um, so I'll call this diagnostics right here, point it at this guy under the pages that I just set up. Um, and then I'll also create another one. And this will be my equipment scheduler. Call it equipment and point it at my equipment page that I have right there. And that looks good to me. So I'll come through, I'll hit save. Uh, this is the live demo. So we'll, we'll make sure that I got everything right. Uh, you know, But those should just pop up for you. And you should be able to see diagnostics equipment. These should all be uh, mobile responsive as well. So if you're on a small device, if you're on a big device, uh, you should be able to see different views of these. Um, and one of the nice things that Ignition does is it'll auto shrink and expand that sidebar if you're on a small device or a large device. Um, that's one that's again, just options that you have behind the scenes. Um, and you have this information now inside your menu that you can get to. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to show quickly is pulling in that information that I just had going. I was going into the um, database and the case log and you can see I did get the configuration, right? That's going in live now. Uh, and that's all going into this query that I had set up earlier that I pulled in here. If I test this, I can see the information that's um, inside here. So I've got all of those different points. Uh, I've got uh, case counts, I've got timestamps for when those are happening. And what I'll do is I'll just put this log on a screen. So I'll create another view right here. Uh, this view will be another simple view and we'll do it. Um, once again, I'll copy one of these, just get the styling that's along the top. Um, I could create one fresh if I wanted to, of course. Um, and then I'm going to come in and uh, this will be my case uh, log. And inside my case log window, uh, this view, I will open this up, give the name something that makes sense, call it case log, um, toss this component, we don't need that. And I'm just gonna drop a table on the screen so everybody can see this as it's happening and then set it up so that it will refresh it in real time as well. So drop a table right here, put it on the screen, uh, set it up so that it expands. So um, it comes through same properties that I've been playing with the whole time right here. So I'll set it up so that it grows as well. Uh, and then set up the data, this data binding here. So it's going to that query that I set up a second ago uh, and then hit okay, and that's it. And I've got information from my case log right there. I'll come in once again, I'll give it a nice little friendly URL. So I'll call this uh, case log. Uh, might be a little friendlier with the dash so that um, pop in over here to the pages do a case log right there and then throw it into my navigation. Uh, so once again, that's docs menu here by default. Uh, and then inside this menu that I set up, uh, this is, I'll just take what I've got over here. Maybe I'll put it before 
um, my diagnostics. So I'll just insert it right there, call this a case log and give it a label that makes sense, case log and an icon. And if this is a log icon, um, sure, I'll just pick something random. You get the idea, there's a lot of different logs, <laughs> different icons that are available there. Uh, and so then I come over here and you'll notice if you're still on that application, um, your menu is now much more extensive. You have the home screen that we created, you have these charts, um, and alarms, you have equipment, you have the case log, and you have diagnostics all sitting right there. The diagnostics is full featured out of the box. You can see the drivers, you can see the devices that are connected, you can see the state they're in, you can see the databases that are connected, the session information here, device information. Um, and if you're taking a look at uh, any of these other pieces. So for example, the charts, I didn't show this in more detail, but these charts are fully configurable as well. So we configured them as we started out. If you're on a mobile device, you might see the charts start out just by showing this browse tags right here. Uh, if you click this button in the upper right, um, that'll close that tag browser and it'll switch over so that you're just looking at the uh, charts overall. And then you can open the, up the tag browser again with this button on the left. Anybody in the runtime and the visual here can browse tags, pick the tags that you want to add from any tag that's inside history. And just to show that this isn't smoke and mirrors, right? These are all the tags that are inside there. I'll come in and I'll just add a few more tags. So um, let me add some of them from our MicroLogics here. So I'll add my AMPS tag and a few of these in tags. I'll hit uh, enabled, hit true right here. I'll go to the target database, hit OK. And then immediately when I come back and I take a look at this, uh, if I hit refresh, I'm going to see that I also have those in seven tags. I could come in, add AMPS. We get some AMPS history that just started out right here and it's right on the graph alongside everything else. All right, I noticed that there were a few questions that uh, hopped into the Q&A here. Um, I think we'll circle back to them, but I can pull back up the designer if there's anything related to the design that I um, put inside uh, the space here. Uh, let me let me go ahead and just switch back. This, these are the main things that I wanted to show you. Ignition, of course, has a lot more functionality than just what I was showing, but I wanted to show how easy it is to get started, how easy it is to create something that's connected to industrial uh, data or to SQL data. Um, any of that history that you're seeing inside the equipment section has historical data inside there. And folks create entire database applications using Ignition. We have folks from all over the world who've created really extensive inventory tracking systems and tie it into existing central IT systems and ticketing systems and created ticketing systems inside Ignition. And uh, you know had uh, we, we in fact internally at Inductive Automation use Ignition for our CRM. So we're tracking customer relationships, we're tracking licenses, we're tracking uh, pretty much everything that we do that's customer relating, uh, we're tracking through Ignition ourselves internally. So it's a very powerful uh, database front end, very powerful uh, a way to build applications there for folks. Thanks. All right, so yeah, yeah do, you want, do you want me to go through these questions or do you want to, do you want me to pitch them to you or are you going to look through the list yourself? What do you prefer? Oh yeah. If you want to pitch them to me, that'd be great. I had sure. a couple of slides before I had the Q and A okay. slide. So I thought that uh, we could do sure. those very quickly. Go for yeah. It. So, in, okay, great. So inductive university is a site that we have that if you're just learning mission or you're, you're interested in checking it out or you've never done anything with it before and you're playing with it for the first time, it has, uh, a few hundred videos inside there that are all really short videos. We target, you know, somewhere from one to five minutes uh, that will walk you through individual pieces and concepts and architectures and things like that to help you get started so that you can do things as quickly as I just did. Nothing that I did was terribly complicated. Um, and we do have a lot of complexity that we can expose. And I didn't even touch scripting, but if you are someone who enjoys scripting, there's a lot of power there as well. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, completely uh, miss that. Um, and then this does bring me to my questions and comments slide right here. Um, we have uh, all the folks that you can reach out to at the bottom there. Um, and I also wanted to mention that we have ICC coming up. This is the Ignition Community Conference. 
Uh, this is happening on September 21st and 22nd. This is a virtual conference and it is free for everyone. We've put a lot of work into this conference uh, and we are hoping that everybody attends uh, who can, who's interested. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to mention here is that we have an integrator program, uh, of course, talking to CSIA. If you're not part of our integrator program, please join. Uh, it's free. There's no upfront obligations. Uh, you can just join the program itself. If you get certified, then you'll get a listing on our website. Uh, we have uh, lots of integrators who've gone through and done that, uh, and we'd love to add your name to the list. So uh, please, please, please feel free to reach out, uh, work with us. Uh, we, we're, we're friendly. Uh, we, we like talking to people. Um, and we are, um, we, we have a position inside our organization that's our integrated program manager uh, position. Uh, we do actually have an opening for that position. We have someone in that role right now who's jumping over to another role inside the company um, and we have an opening. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're looking for Something. Uh, if you're independent out there and you're looking for a, or looking for a change of pace, we'd love to have you reach out. If you're working for a good integrator, please uh, please stick with them. We support our integrators. We don't want to poach anybody. Um, that's that's absolutely not our goal here. But um, if you're interested, check out the listing and other listings that we have on our career site as well. All right. With all of that, uh, Lisa, yeah, if you wanted to pull up some of the Q and A, that would be great. Yeah, this thing is popping, Kevin. So we're All gonna right, get through as many as we can. And I don't know if you can stay a little bit after the hour. Um, and maybe we can finish up whatever questions we don't get to. If you have to pop Yeah, up. I should yeah. I should be able to stay a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. So the first one I have here is can we deploy the web to open clouds such as AWS, Azure, etc.? If yes, could that be service in case of AWS? Yes. So Good question. The the last sentence slightly confusing to me, but yeah. maybe uh, I'll I'll answer it from a few different angles to try to answer the the heart of the question. Yes, absolutely. So you can deploy all of this to the cloud um, if you are connecting to the cloud, and uh, so if you have AWS, Azure, Google uh, Cloud Engine, IBM Watson, um, Rackspace, any of these that have virtual machines that you can run in the cloud, you can absolutely just spin up Ignition and run inside the cloud. Uh, often folks who have actual devices. So if you're not doing an IT application inside Ignition, if you're doing an industrial application, you'll often be connected to devices. Normally your device data collection would still be at the plant or would still be um, local next to the actual device um, so that you can weather network outages and, and things like that. And also do efficient communication up because normally device communication isn't very efficient uh, when you're talking industrial devices. They're normally a pretty heavyweight protocol. and so. Uh, it's common to have a small data collector, like an Ignition data collector right alongside those things that's pushing data up to Ignition. And that can be sent over MQTT, MQTT spark plug. I'm sure that most of you know what that is by this point. Um, it can be sent up that way. It can be sent up over Ignition's own protocol called the Gateway Network. And both of those support that store and forward to weather those network outages. Uh, in addition to that, when you're talking about can it be deployed as a service, um, we do have support for Docker. If you're running Docker inside a virtual machine or inside an instance, um, if you're looking at using something like Kubernetes or one of these orchestration engines, we have support for that coming up. Um, that's not here yet, but it will be here soon. So um, that's the quick answer to that. How to have a website for different customers. For example, I need customer1.com, customer2.com, and how do you set up login for different customers? Sure, sure. So I didn't show any of the security. There's an extensive security system behind the scenes inside Ignition. Um, if you want to use uh, different copies of Ignition for different customers, you can absolutely just do that. You install them on different systems and you have different URLs. If you want to do multiple copies from the same um, uh, Ignition installation, uh, multiple customers. Uh, we have something inside our license agreement that says uh, you can't do that. We do have an exception to that. Um, that's a multi-tenant uh, hosting exception that we sometimes uh, provide to customers. But we always like those folks to be people who are familiar with Ignition, who understand the tools, who are going to be able to do proper data separation, like to have that conversation up front to make sure that customer one's data isn't exposed to customer two, uh, to make sure that the customer's user experiences are good as things scale up. So 
If you're interested in doing that, I'd encourage you to reach out to Inductive Automation. Um, talk to somebody over here. We'd be happy to have that conversation with you and provide some guidance along the way too. Do you need a special module for the for transaction groups or is it part of the base ignition package? Yeah, good question. So there is no such thing as the base ignition package. A lot of people think of that, um, think of the an ignition package as the base ignition package. Um, but if you take a look at our pricing page, we're actually really transparent about our pricing. Um, it's all right here on our website. If you take a look at these uh, and you just scroll down, you build your own package here. But if you're taking a look at these unlimited packages, any of these, if we're talking the basic, maybe somebody would refer to this as the basic ignition package, um, then basically what you're looking for inside here is the SQL bridge module. This is where the transaction groups are. So the SQL bridge module is part of the pro package and the ultimate package, um, but it doesn't come inside that basic package. That said, if I select the basic package right here and I come down and I customize, um, I can just pick SQL bridge, hit that button, and that's going to add it directly there. So uh, you don't have to pick one of these packages. Basically, we encourage folks to pick the functionality that you need um, and don't pay for functionality that you don't need. You know, that doesn't make any sense to anybody. So we split out everything into modules to make it relatively easy to pick and choose the tool set that you need for your application. Does Perspective have any built-in high-performance HMI ISA 101 design components? I don't know what any of that yeah. means, but I hope you do. Oh, I do. <laughs> okay. I do, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, so good news. Um, if you come over and you take a look at Symbol Factory um, and we take a look at some of these basic symbols, um, a lot of these are uh, somewhat similar. Um, and you can actually take any of these symbols um, you can do uh, outline versions of these. Uh, we have some tools inside Ignition that'll let you do that type of thing. Um, and uh, Vision and Perspective are two visualization systems. Vision has some of those tools built in here um, as well. So you can click on the outline tool, for example, and, and create a simple version of these. Um, uh, so the, the quick answer is we have lots of folks who are doing ISA 101 type of things. Uh, we don't have a specific palette that says this is the ISA 101 palette, um, but we also have a number of, um, I'll just drop this on the, the homepage right here. Uh, we have a number of additional uh, components that are over here that allow different types of rendering. So if I have this motor, this pump or sensors, um, whatever it happens to be, and I uh, pop this in, let me, let me pop it into the um, set up over here. I'll put it right next to my tanks. Um, and so, uh, sorry, my, my connection's a little bit slow right now. Um, so pull this in, the, the pump comes in right here. Um, this pump, you've got different rendering modes for all of this too. So if you want this to be representative, you can do that. Um, if you want the appearance to be uh, more of a simple pump, um, diagram, or if you want it to be a mimic where it actually shows a lot more in detail, um, you've got some options for this built-in tool set as well. Awesome. How to ensure safety when you, I think he means integrate, how to ensure safety when you integrate your SCADA application to a web-based structure? There is uh, a great question. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. There is some way to protect in Ignition how performance is based on web comparing with typical implementation. Okay, so two questions there. So um, the first one, security. Uh, normally that security is done through a, uh, and I'll pull up the inductive automation website just to help answer this. this we have a number of architecture diagrams here um, that we can pull up so I can highlight a couple of things inside here. So inside Ignition itself, uh, let's say that you're going with one of those architectures where you have a facility and you have Ignition on the cloud, for example. Um, you might have a setup like this where you've got some data collection that's sitting in the facility. It sends information central. Um, the security that's being set up, even the security in a really simple architecture here, the security that's set up if you're using web applications generally plugs into your IT um, security setup that they already have. So if you have Active Directory, if you have ADFS, Active Directory Federated Services, if you have SAML or OpenID Connect, those are all technologies that are used on the web for single sign-on. And there are also technologies that are controlled by your organization in a way that Ignition plugs into them. Um, Ignition can take advantage of them, but Ignition isn't the one who's responsible for that user access 
folks who are already paid to be doing that user access and disabling people's accounts when they leave the company um, and setting that up correctly and making sure that that works across all the different browsers and all of that. Those are the folks who are going to be maintaining the security system there. And then Ignition just leverages that. Um, so security is often done that way. Um, we also have, security can be a pretty complex topic. Um, and so we sometimes have hour long meetings with individual companies, uh, security folks to be able to talk through different protocols, different um, parts of network architectures, different separations that they might wanna have. Some folks uh, end up with this architecture and put a separate system right outside of it because they want to reduce their, their risk exposure. Basically, they, they don't wanna have this exposed on the internet directly and Ignition supports things like read only connections coming from an external system. Um, and some folks put these systems directly on the internet and uh, either way, Ignition uh, Inductive Automation has a security hardening guide and we're happy to provide advice for your specific, uh, sorry, I stumbled over for your specific um, architecture there, what you need to you know, actually accomplish for, for what your requirements are, and what your, your risk structure looks like. And in fact, we have a number of security events on a regular basis and security webinars. And, um, we have uh, some more of those coming up so you can always stay tuned on the Inductive Automation website. Um, for the upcoming events that we have around that. Thanks, Kevin. So I'm going to um, finish out. We're at the top of the hour here. I'm going to put my final mm -hmm. slides up. If people want to stay for a little bit longer, we'll try and get through some more of these questions. There's a ton of them on here. Um, and while I'm doing that, Kevin, maybe you can put your contact information in the chat, as well as you mentioned there's some resources on the web for people to get, because a lot of these questions are very they're looking for more resources so if there's a sure. place specifically either where you have your upcoming events or i mentioned i think you said there's a university page maybe that would be helpful mm -hmm. for people too um and in the meantime then i'm going to go ahead and do my little bit here um on behalf sounds good thank you on behalf of csa i would like to thank kevin for this informative discussion i'd also like to thank inductive automation for sponsoring this event and of course thank you for attending I'd like to remind you that a recording will be available for viewing within the next couple of days. Be sure to bookmark the CSIA events calendar so you don't miss any upcoming events. This concludes our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us and have a great day. If you're sticking around um, to, to get some of these more questions answered, great, love to have you. Uh, we'll try and get through a few more. Otherwise, have a great day. Um, so here's a here's one a question. How do I calculate how many licenses I will need for my project? Sure. So it's going to depend on the number of users, the number of devices, the number of tags. Uh, if you have a number of users who are, um, you know, you, you count it based on concurrent users. And generally speaking, if it's up to 100 or 200 concurrent users that are using the system, if you're up to maybe 100,000 tags inside your system overall, if you're connecting to 10, 20, 30 devices, uh, 50 devices, maybe even 100 devices, uh, you can normally do that with a single license. Uh, so ignition scales pretty large if you're taking a look at the overall architecture um, that we were taking a look at a second ago. Uh, and if you need more than that, uh, we do have scale out architectures that allow you to have multiple front end gateways, multiple back end gateways, tag and IO gateways, and set things up like this so you can have multiple licenses for that. And then, of course, if you're collecting data from different locations, your bigger license might be the central license. And then these data logging boxes or these other ignition gateways out here can just be the data conduit that's coming through that has information that's being sent up to the central ignition. Uh, system right there. And those are smaller licenses as well. So anything, anywhere you have Ignition running, you need a license. Um, however, you don't need any licenses for clients. I don't know if that was mentioned earlier um, or just assumed that you knew, um, but with Ignition, that's one of the big differences. You don't need licenses for clients. You don't need licenses for uh, designers. You don't need licenses for tags. Those are all included inside those unlimited packages. And the only time that you actually need another license is if you want another Ignition uh, system anywhere else in your architecture, either because you're exhausting the resources on that system um, and you need to split it out with multiple systems or because you have geographic separation and you want to have multiple different systems um, that are, are separate from each other. Does the designer need to be installed on the same machine that is hosting the gateway? Absolutely not. Designer can be run, installed, uh, launched anywhere. So um, yeah, most folks don't have the designer on that same system. 
Um, I always have my local designer and then I'll connect to any remote ignition gateway. Can individual users save their chart configurations per user? That way, when they open a session with their credentials, their chart will already be populated with the tags they want. Sure, sure. Good question. And, and yes, absolutely. So the um, inside this demo application right here, um, we don't have it doing that automatically, uh, but it's really easy to do. Basically, you have this property configuration. All of this can go into a database or go somewhere else. And in fact, I was showing the, uh, the exchange earlier, inside the exchange, there is a resource that is an ad hoc trends resource that has a save button. So basically someone went through and, and did that. So this goes into a database and you can just grab that resource and, and use it. So, um, so yeah, uh, folks do that all the time. Can you use previous created templates from the vision slash template section in the views? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, so this is from someone who already knows Ignition, who's been using Ignition for a while and has used our previous uh, visualization system. Um, when I say previous, I really mean the one that existed before Perspective. Both of these are still fully supported by inductive automation. Uh, we don't have plans to retire one or the other. Um, and so I want to be super clear about that you know, vision and, and not implying that vision is going away. That is the previous one and it's no longer um, an active one. It's absolutely active. So vision is for folks who want full desktop applications uh, as opposed to web visualization. So if you're thinking about moving from those desktop applications over to perspective, um, those desktop applications might have templates inside there. And the question was, can I take these templates that are built inside vision and pull them into perspective? Uh, the quick answer is no, unfortunately. So the design for the web and the design for desktop applications uh, using Swing is completely different. They're completely different design paradigms. Even though we try to make them look somewhat similar inside the designer uh, behind the scenes, the plumbing, the technologies used are, are just, they're night and day different from each other. Um, and so we don't have anything that will take something from vision and import it into perspective. If you're creating, uh, if you have a template and vision that you really like and you want to use it in perspective, you'll need to come into views and create a new view um, that works as that template inside perspective. Um, so there's some, some redesign work that you'll need to do uh, in order to support that. Of course, any tags that you have, any history that you have, any alarming that you have, any scripts that you have, as long as they're not tied directly to vision, um, all of those will still work inside perspective. So it's just the visuals that you need to recreate, not everything. Is there a recommended way to make a mobile responsive perspective view for a complex P and ID process flow type screen without using a bunch of embedded views or an XY coordinate container? Will drawing tools be available in future versions of perspective? Yeah, yeah. So um, in terms of a recommended way, I, I wouldn't say there's something that we would call ourselves a recommended way, but we do have a few ways that we have done this inside some of our demonstrations. Uh, and our, our recommendation would be to use whatever way works best for you. Um, but if I come over to this real time, this is in our demo application that we created. This PNID um, basically resizes to a certain point. Uh, and when it hits the breakpoint, it switches out from instead of being all of these individual um, drawn items, it goes to more mobile friendly. Um, where you get these listed out. So tank one, tank two, day tank, valve, uh, et cetera. And you can still interact with these and control them and um, do whatever you need to with this. But if you're on a mobile device, basically it'll list all these out. If you're on a uh, wider device or a desktop device, it gives the actual PNID. Um, we've also done these where it'll split up the PNID. So you have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. And as you shrink this down, then it'll wrap. And so you'll get this part on this side and then you'll get this wrapped down to the next section. So what actually is needed for an actual process is going to be up to you. And we don't really lock you into doing it in a certain way. Um, and I'm sorry, I lost the thread on the last part of that question. Can you repeat that? I actually already dismissed it. You know, this no. might be a good time to, to wrap up here. There's still a ton of questions. Sure. A lot of them are getting really, um, individual specific ones. So I think maybe at this point, it's just best to um, call it. And I appreciate your time today, Kevin. You've gotten a lot of great accolades in the chat box here. Everybody was very um, impressed with the presentation and found it very interesting. And I appreciate your time today. Did, did we hear a little um, music, musician in the background for a little while there? 
Was there? I, I felt felt like somebody was playing a little xylophone. <laughs> I'm I I'm not sure. I, oh, I have okay. a little one who's running around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I think she's not in the house right now. So okay. um, maybe, maybe I, it was on I, my I don't, end. I don't know what happened to me. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so um, much. What, I, Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. What, one thing I did want to note is that anybody who has extending questions right there, I did put my information into the chat. Um, you can send me an email directly. Um, I would be happy to talk to you folks um, or pass those questions on to the rest of my team. Um, and then we have folks uh, who, as I mentioned earlier, are more than happy to talk to you about any of this. Um, we, we answer these types of questions. We're all engineers on our side, right? And so we're happy to have these conversations, point people in the right direction. And we've, you know, th this technology, we've seen it transform so many companies that we work with. And we'd love to, you know, be able to continue to, uh, help that happen from our side. So um, yeah, uh, final thank you. Thank you to the CSIA folks. Uh, thank you to all the attendees here. Uh, it's been good talking to everybody and uh, um, back over to you, Lisa. Yeah, everybody have a great day. Thanks for attending.